Hello everyone. I did a blog post the other day talking about, uh, well, answering actually, uh, it was a question on Reddit talking about how, if there was any way you could do history logging of the computers you have remoted into with the uh, CMRC viewer from uh, Configuration Manager. And one of my suggestions was to do a PowerShell script that just output that uh, that well that starts the CMRC viewer and then outputs the information you want to uh, a log file pretty much to keep track on it. Um, the thing I want to do now is just to pretty much take that same script but show it off how you can make a GUI out of it. Uh, if you don't want to use the PowerShell script that I just uh, show, well running it as a regular PowerShell script as I showed you in that blog post that will be linked below for sure. Um, <clears throat> and take the opportunity to show off uh, PowerShell Studios, which is a great tool, I think, for uh, just creating GUIs in general. It's from a company called Sapien. Uh, there is actually, I think they have like a 45 day old trial uh, on that uh, application as well, or pretty much all their applications. But PowerShell Studios, uh, you should really check it out if you haven't tried it out before. So I'm just gonna show you guys how to make a simple GUI and combining that with the PowerShell script I made to use uh, CMRC viewer and connect with that and have the logging functionality. So let's jump over to PowerShell Studio here. <coughs> Excuse me. So first of all, we want to start a new project. We're gonna do a uh, Let's see here, uh, a new form, create a new GUI based script. We're gonna show, uh, choose empty form. And here we have it. On the left side, we have a toolbox where there is all these Windows forms, uh, properties or functions you can put in uh, to design your GUI. So we're gonna start out with adding two buttons Let's do like that, one, two of them, copy paste. And down here to the right, we go to text and we change that to connect because that would be our connect button. The next one, same thing there, change the text and we would do history. Like that. Then we need a text box and we place it, let's do it up like that. And, yeah. and then we're gonna choose a label just to enter it over there. And to edit the text on the label and we do enter computer name. Enter computer name. <clears throat> We change the text on the form and we do CMRC viewer. And we change the size, something like that. And I believe you can lock it down, design, lock true. <clears throat> so what we did here, we just finished up the uh, well, the sign part. So this is how the GUI will look like. And now we need to do the scripting behind it so we can bind the different buttons to different functions uh, and to do what we want it to do. Uh, so if I just double, uh, if I select the uh, text box here and just double click to it, it will throw me to the script part and we have it here, the text box one. So in here I can put a script if I want to and on the button as well, button click connect and history as well. What we're gonna start out by doing is just uh, adding a variable that's log path equals C, uh, CMRC viewer dot log. <clears throat> so as soon as the uh, you run this uh, script, uh, this uh, log, well, log variable will be populated with this information here. Uh, what else do we need? Form load, nope, we don't need that one. We're not 
need anything for the text box, but for the button click, we need. So we're gonna start out with uh, doing a a pop-up window. If there is no text in the text box, we do if not. Oh, right. Uh, if not text box one dot text. If not, <clears throat> we do we do like this? I think this is right. System windows dot forms dot messages dot show no. Specified error row no computer specified like that. So if there's no text in the text box. Uh, a message will pop up saying no computer specified. Else, we do computer name equals text box one dot text. We do date equals get date. Perfect. Then we do CM RC viewer equals, and we need the path to where the CMRC viewer exe file exists on the server, like that. Then we're gonna launch it. CMRC. The computer name. Then we want to do our file. And yeah, pretty much all of this stuff is already mentioned in the blog post I did uh, earlier. So we're not going to go into details on everything here. And, and on history, we're just gonna do a, when we click the history button, we're gonna do an invoke item and log path. So that's gonna open up that file so that we specified before in the log path variable. Uh, let's go see, see more viewer. Yep, looks good so far. Uh, let's save the project, uh, cmrcv, and then we're gonna do, I'm just gonna build it to an exe file. Uh, I don't wanna config. Yep, that will do for now, build. I'm gonna take that exe file and put it on my SCCM server. So let's jump over there. And put the exe file there. <clears throat> oh, let's see if this works. Yeah. So we have our GUI here. We gotta enter a computer name. SD011. We're gonna click connect. And we are connecting with CMRC viewer. If we go back to the GUI and we press history, we will get a log file with date, time, and computer name. Uh, let's see if we want to connect to somewhere else. Let's disconnect that one and we do 10 instead. Uh, the thing I love with CM Trace is that it dynamically 
updates the log file. So I don't need to reopen it to get the latest info. It just will dynamically update it. So if I click connect here now to SD010, uh, it will add that to the text file straight away. Uh, it won't be able to connect because that VM is not online. So we just save that and we can try 11 again. <clears throat> and we are connected to 11. And as you can see in the CM trace, it's just updated. So from now on, as long as I use this GUI, I will have a list. I can just keep this log file open. And if I need to go back, I can see, oh, okay, what did I do this date with that time? Which computer was that again? Which one uh, were I helping out? Or yeah, which person were I helping during that period of time? So hopefully this has been somewhat helpful for you. Uh, as I said before, uh, PowerShell Studio by Sapiens, a really good tool. Uh, it's a little bit, well, I wouldn't say expensive, but it costs a few hundred bucks. I think it's like $300 or something like that for a license. Uh, but they have a 45 day trial that you should uh, really check out. Uh, there are some limitations on how um, advanced you can do your GUIs and stuff. I can't remember exactly what they did restrict in the trial version, but just try it out and see if you like it or not, because, well, as for me, I really like it for making GUIs. When I do regular scripts like that, I just, I prefer the standard IAC. Uh, I just like using that one. Uh, but for GUIs, for sure, PowerShell Studio by Sapien. Check it out. Hopefully, yeah, you got something out of this video and I'll see you around next time. Bye.